What's going on guys? In a lot of my videos, you guys comment about why don't I have my bench grinder fastened down to the bench. It's been almost two years. I guess it's about time. So that's what we're going to work on today. We're going to build a budget DIY pedestal base, probably better than anything you could buy. Let's get going. So here's my grinder guys. It just sits here and it has been sitting here for a while and as you can see it just kind of lives here and as it vibrates around I just kind of push it back to where I need it. It makes it difficult when you're actually grinding stuff because it has a tendency to want to walk off the bench. Well it's been a couple years now. I need to build a grinder base because we're going to be building another tool in an upcoming episode that's going to live right here where this grinder is. For the plate that's going to sit underneath this that this is going to bolt to. I've got a piece of scrap half inch plate that I picked up from my scrap yard and that plate that we cut out is going to sit on top of this three inch schedule 40 tube that I picked up at my scrap yard as a drop and this is going to be the base and I picked this up for free and this thing is massive and it's heavy guys. What this is is that this is a brake drum for like a heavy truck or trailer like a big rig or a dump truck, that's what this is. Now I've welded on these before and generally I've had issues with them cracking because I think this is probably some type of cast or cast iron or I don't really know what it is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out a plate that's gonna fit over this and I'll just bolt it down in a couple areas onto this so then we don't have to worry about cracking and I'm gonna use that same half inch plate to do it. And when we're all said and done, this pedestal is probably going to weigh close to 200 pounds. So, which is good because it's not going to float all around the shop and vibrate everywhere. And the best part about this build is I have less than $40 in all of it. It's all scraps. It's all drops from the scrapyard. For the base, I'm just going to go a little bit bigger. Not much. This bench grinder that I have, it's an 8 inch. It's measured about 5. So I'll make that plate about 6. In case I ever had to replace this, I don't want to end up having to go cutting everything apart. And it's measuring about seven that way, so I'll make it about eight. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just verify at least that our edges are square that I'm building off from. And that is good. So first measure will be eight inches. So we'll mark out eight inches right there. That's good. And we'll mark out six inches right here. There. And we'll just draw that line. Let's see, this is measuring, we'll call it 13 inches across. It's 13 and a quarter, roughly. Now the next thing we gotta do is we gotta cut that circle into this to mount onto that drum, that brake drum. But it's got this little piece on it that I gotta grind away so that I can lay this out properly. But this little piece on here is one of the reasons why I got a good deal. When you go to the scrapyard, be sure that you ask the guy for drops. Tell him that you're looking for some plate. Tell him whatever it is that you're looking for and tell him you're just trying to save some money and look for drops and they'll normally steer you in the right direction. At least that's how they are around here. I picked this stuff up all for cheap and they sold it to me by the pound. Now we're going to grind this off, flush it up, and then we can finish our layout. That's a little bit of the drawback with working with this type of metal. You've got to work with it and handle it a little bit. That's all. So guys, check this out. I picked these up a little while ago because you got to have hearing protection when you're in the workshop. But these are a Bluetooth hearing protection with amplification. So if I have the radio on in the background, I can actually have it going inside my headphones with them on. I can hear it just as though my headphones are off. So it's pretty cool. And because it's Bluetooth, it can hook into your phone. So if you get a phone call, so I can literally have these on and completely hear everything around me. So if someone comes into the workshop, I can hear the radio in the background. Pretty neat. So... I love good hearing protection, I just don't like that I can't hear when I'm wearing it. With these, you can. Now I'm going to show you how to build a template so we can get that perfect 13 inch circle that we need. So what I have here guys is just an old paint stirrer. It's a big one for like a 5 gallon pail. So all you're going to do is just take a drill bit that fits whatever marker you're going to use to mark the metal and drill a hole in the wood. And now that we got the hole drilled in the end of the paint stick, we're going to go half the distance that we needed. So if we needed a 13 inch circle, then we're going to make a mark over six and a half. Because six and a half and six and a half is 13. And now you're going to drill another hole there. So now what you're going to do guys is you're just going to put 
a point in one of them, I'm just using a drywall screw, is a pivot point. And then you're going to stick your metal marker down in the other one and just rotate it around. Just like that. And if we did it right, it should make a perfect 13 inch circle. You can do the same thing using a piece of string. I think it's just a little bit harder though. You could cut this out a bunch of ways. You could use an angle grinder. Uh, you could use a cutting torch. What we're going to use here today is a plasma cutter. I think that that's going to be the fastest way. I've got a real inexpensive budget plasma cutter. It works awesome. So that's what we're going to cut this out with today. It should make short work of it. All right. So based on the material thickness, I'm going to have to max this out. So supposed to be rated for 50 amps. It's a dual voltage, uh, 120, 240. It does it automatically. I got it plugged into 240 right now. So I got it maxed out and it looks like I am on a little over 30 PSI. I got to be at 50 according to the material thickness I'm using. So it's about 40. Right about there. All right. Now setting the amperage and the pressure on your plasma cutter is crucial to getting a good cut and can save your consumables. I know I've always done it, probably a lot of you have. You just turn it up and you turn up the air and you call it a day. Well that isn't really the best way of doing it. You know if you're using oxygen and acetylene and you're cutting an eighth inch plate, you're not going to turn everything up as high as you can and have this massive flame. You're just being wasteful. You're going to optimize your machine by dialing in the right amperage and the right air. And if you want to know how to do that, I have a video. I'll explain it to you in that video. I picked up this plasma cutter probably two or three years ago now. It's just an inexpensive import model, nothing fancy. Like I said, rated at 50 amps and I have had really good luck with it. The plasma cutters of the current age right now are much better than what they were when they first came out. A lot of the first ones were duds, they didn't work good. You'd plug them in, a lot of times they'd blow up. I think they probably realized that they weren't gonna go too far making inferior products and they've actually made them quite a bit better. So, This 50 amp plasma cutter will cut about a maximum of a half inch. That's about the max that you're gonna to wanna to do. I've got it plugged in to 240 power here and having dry air is a huge help. I don't have anything fancy for a compressor. It's a older model, probably 15 years old. It's a Craftsman air compressor, five horsepower with a 30 gallon tank. It's a single stage, nothing fancy. And that keeps up pretty well with this. You just can't plug it into the same circuit as your air compressor. So if you're running the plasma cutter on one circuit, you can't have your air compressor plugged into the same one. Uh, because you'll end up tripping the breaker. If you want to know more about it, I'll put a link down below. They're all pretty much the same. I think this is what's referred to as a cut 50, and I think I paid right around $200 for it. But like I said, I'll put a link down below. And the consumables are really cheap to replace for this, and the consumables are the part that actually does the cutting. If you put an inline air dryer in your system, it will preserve the life of the consumables considerably. But I don't have one, I just replace them. They're cheap enough. All right, so now we got to cut our tube. So this will sit on here like that, okay? There'll be some holes. Then the tube will weld to this, and then this will weld to the other end of that tube. So what I want to do is I want the grinder base 34 inches off the floor. That's where it is right now, and I really like that height. So the easy way to do that is just stack all my pieces like this and that's about 11 and a half so 34 minus 11 and a half so my tube needs to be 22 and a half inches long we're going to cut this using the evolution chop saw this saw comes with an adapter made to fit pipe and other pieces of material that you want to cut at a bias and it just drops on like that it's pretty simple already marked my pipe out. So I'm just going to line it up to the blade. That looks good right there. Snug it up a little bit. Look at that guys. If this was an abrasive blade I'd have burnt my hand off. There we go. Perfect. Alright, now we're going to get holes through this, so one on each side, 
to mount the grinder. Those are 3 eighths. That's the hole size in the base of the grinder. So we might as well make these 3 eighths as well. So let's get this round plate marked out. And then we can get that drilled. And then we'll do the same thing with this. So I think I'm going to go every other hole there. Yeah, that would work. If I did every other, that would make one, two, three, four, five. Yep, that'll work perfect. To mark it, is that better? Alright, to mark this out, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of center it you know, roughly over this area here. Then I'll pull it, ah, it's heavy, off the edge of the table, reach my hand up in, and then make a circle. Uh, where those holes are, then we'll flip it over, center punch it. I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. This is the metal marker that I use, but because I don't like to read directions, a viewer pointed out, and I've been using this for a long time, that if you pull this cap off, it has a little pencil sharpener in the end of it. Just like that. Check that out. Sharpened up. I just normally do it like a soapstone, scrubbing it back and forth, but yeah. So now I know. So for you guys that don't like to read directions like me, now you know. No charge for that tip. Alright. I'll flip it over. Oh yeah, look at that. Piece of cake. Perfect. So now we'll just center punch them and then we can drill them out. While I'm right here, I might as well lay out this plate too. So we said the plate was six inches deep, so half of that is three inches. So this will be where the bolt holes go for the grinder. All right, so that's center. Now we just gotta find the spacing on the grinder. It looks to be about five and three quarters. So the plate is eight inches, half of that is four, and then we needed to be five and three quarters over. And then half of five and three quarter is two and seven eighths. So that should balance it out evenly. Two and seven eighths there. Now come over five and three quarters there. That should be roughly an inch and an eighth in on each side, just about. Yep, it is. Good. So we'll center punch this. All right, time to get all this stuff drilled out. A little bit of a change of plans. I am going with a 9 16 hole, and the reason for that is that that's the smallest size annular cutter that I have. So I'm going to take out the chuck and drop in an annular cutter. Some of you guys have mentioned in the build video to this, and if you want to check that out, I'll put a link up above, that it looks kind of like janky or it's all wobbly or whatever. Well, I've got this on... Um, rollers, so I'll show you. They're just on some cheap Harbor Freight rollers. That way I can uh, move it all around the shop and clean and just makes it nice. I like my stuff mobile. I could have used the 3 8 drill bit with this, but the reason I'm not is because I don't have to drill a pilot hole. This will just be a lot faster. You can just drill right to the size using an annular cutter. There's no pilot hole required. Yeah, this is an awesome tool, guys. This is a huge time saver. <laughs> Now I just line up the point of the annular cutter to our punch mark. That looks good just like that. And I'll clamp this to the table. Turn on the magnet. There it is. Turn on the automatic oiler. There it goes. Turn on the motor. It's that quick, guys. I mean, it just works so awesome. I'd still be drilling if that was a bit. I got quite a few comments in the original build video that's attached here. Why don't I just buy a mill drill and do it that way? 
Well, the reason for that is, like I kind of explained in the video, is that I don't really have a need for a mill. By doing this build that we did here, not only do I have a drill press that goes up to probably about 20 inches of depth, I also have a secondary tool, which is the mag drill, that I can literally remove from this base easily by just picking it up uh, after I remove the safety strap and walk away. So for the price of one tool, I actually ended up with two. I think I got the better deal. If I had a need for a mill drill, I would have bought one. And in my opinion, this is 10 times better than any drill press that you're gonna find. And because it uses annular cutters, it completely eliminates the need for a pilot bit. I can go directly to the size hole I need, which also saves a pile of time. Look at all these chips. This is why I keep this little piece of cardboard underneath. And although it really doesn't matter, I'm just gonna chamfer all the holes. It's just something I like to do using a little chamfering bit. Now in order to weld this all up guys, we gotta get all this rust off here. Now, I could remove all the rust prior to everything, but I'm not because I'm gonna take it outside and I'll explain that a little bit more here. But what I've done is, is this is where the round tube is gonna go. So I've ground that away. Now I gotta just kind of grind this area away and then we can weld it up. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring all of this outside as a completed welded assembly and I'm gonna clean it up out there and sandblast it. Just, I don't like filling my shop full of, uh, full of dust and dirt and crap. I don't need to do it. I can just bring it outside, keep, keep the shop clean, and it just will do an overall better job. Then we'll bring it back in, paint it up, and assemble it. What I did here was is that I took the tube and I set it on this, and I found out exactly where it needed to go. Then I just traced around it, as you can see, the tube. And then I went through and just did some punch marks along the line. So once I grind away this rust, I can just quickly set that tube on top of this and I know exactly where it needs to be aligned. So just a little alignment trick. I could do it prior to welding it and just kind of like measure it here and there, but this just helps confirm it while I'm welding it that it's exactly where it needs to be. So now I just lined up that tube to these little tiny punch marks. You can see them right there. And I just come in on it. And there we are. Just makes lining it up and fit up a lot easier once we get to this point. And then, so we'll get this tacked in here. Then we'll put the top on. So let's get the welder set up. So this is going to be a little interesting. I'm not sure how this is all going to work out. So, but we'll just give it a try and we'll dial it in that we need to. So I'm using steel uh, wire, 30 thousandths diameter. I um, selected C25 gas, and we're just gonna have to max it out. That's half inch plate, so uh, this goes up with these settings to 210 thousandths, which is 250 would be quarter inch. So I think this will work okay. I think this might be a little hot for the eighth inch, but We'll have to give it a try and see. I may end up having to dial it back. We're going to have to focus our heat on this part into the half inch plate and just kind of like wet into the eighth inch tube, I believe. One of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to start checking this for square so we can get this all lined up nice. So it says it's leaning away from me. This post is going that way. So that means I've got to tack it here and tip it towards me to get it plumb again. Now I'll check it in the other direction, okay? And that's tipping that way a little bit. So I gotta put a tack here. I'll tack it here, pull it plumb, put a tack on the other side to stabilize it and hold it, check it, and then put another tack here to pull it over this way. Make sense? I'm just wearing my lightweight utility gloves just to tack this up because it makes handling the speed square a little bit better. Um, and I will put on a respirator once I get going here, but I'm going to be flipping my hood up checking this So I want some light gloves and uh, I want to be able to maneuver easily But like I say when we get to welding uh, Fully welding it out. I'll have on my heavy gloves and I'll also be wearing a respirator All right, here we go oh, I better turn on the gas. I can see that's an issue. All right, here we go guys.
Can you see how far that dock dies up? Pull this back. I want a little extra. That makes it a little bit easier because now I can hold it against my square. There. That's dead on, guys. Perfect. So now we got to do side to side. Yeah, that's it right there. And this is my Fronius Transteel 2200. It's a brand new machine, and I am absolutely loving this thing. It does MIG, TIG, stick. It's fully digitized. It's inverter. It's buttery smooth, which I really love. And another unique feature is that when you're switching from TIG to MIG, you don't have to switch out bottles of gas. It actually has two provisions on the back. You don't have to disconnect anything. You can have your Argon set up and you can have your C25 set up. And all you do is just press a button on the front and it toggles it to which bottle you want to be on. This is by far, hands down, the nicest welder I've ever used. If you want to know more about it, I'll have links down below. Oh yeah, that worked really good. That was the perfect setting. I kept most of my heat down on the half inch plate and you probably heard it at one point maybe where it actually blew a little hole through the side of the tube. I actually ended up kind of, I did a slight weave to it and I actually ended up kind of weaving up a little bit uh, too much and it actually popped a hole in the side of it. But uh, pretty much for the whole way around, it was making a keyway right in to this uh, eighth inch. So that was burning in good and it was definitely burning in good to the half inch plate. So there it is, yeah. We're not gonna have any issues there. Now I'm gonna try something a little unconventional. I don't know if it's gonna work, but um, I think it will in theory. So you hear this? Vibration and noise. Well, I think that that's gonna be amplified through that grinder when you're using it. So to help dampen the vibration, I think what I'm gonna do is fill this tube with sand. So I, th I think that that sand will not only add a little bit more weight, uh, to keep it stable it'll cut down on like this noise and it might help absorb vibration too any vibration in the grinder it'll maybe absorb it into the sand and not transfer it into the ground so that's my thoughts we're going to give it a try i'm going to use the same sand that i use uh, when we do our testing with our cast iron it's just going to be some play sand <laughs> listen to that it's silent now I'm going to give you a spoiler, but yeah, here I'm just tapping the sand to get it uh, packed down, but it helped tremendously. It took out pretty much all the vibration and noise. Yeah, listen to that. That quieted it down completely. Plus, I had a little bit more weight to it. It's amazing, guys, how time can fly by so fast and you really don't realize it. I've had that bench grinder for probably close to two years, and the reason I set it on the workbench, like I said earlier, is that I just set it there temporarily until I got around to building a, a pedestal base, but I knew I just didn't want any old pedestal base. I wanted something nice, something that's solid, and <laughs> before you know it, two years has gone by and it's still sitting on the bench and I haven't done anything with it. But uh, I can already see a future mod that I might do to this, and that is potentially add a wider piece of plate that I'm welding right now and actually mount two separate grinders side by side. Then I could put a wire wheel and a buffing pad on the other one and keep it all together. Holy, that's heavy. What I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna assemble this all here, put the bolts down through the base, tighten everything up, just cause I don't wanna chip the paint after the fact and we'll just paint all the hardware, paint everything. So we'll sandblast this as one, assemble it now and then just paint everything up as one. And for hardware guys, I'm just using, it's grade five half inch bolts and I'm using nylon lock nuts. And these nylon lock nuts will keep everything from vibrating loose. Now, if you guys go to your local big box store and try to price out hardware, it'll just about blow your socks off how expensive it is. I buy all my hardware through Tractor Supply. It is super cheap and they sell it by the pound. I'm not sponsored by them and I get nothing by telling you this. I'm just telling you this to try to save you a little bit of money. So if you live in the United States, Tractor Supply is a good place to get your hardware. Ha! <laughs> 
All right, so I just got this propped up on a stump. Sorry about the wind, guys. Hopefully it's not too overbearing. It's pretty windy out right now, but uh, to clean this out, I'm just gonna be using my hand sandblaster. It's a pretty inexpensive unit, works really good. I use this for a lot of my projects. I've done truck frames with it. It's just a real convenient way to do it. And for this, I'm using some glass shards, 3060 grit. This stuff's wicked cheap too for a 50 pound bag. Like, I don't know, I can't remember what it is, but it's less than 10 bucks a bag, maybe four dollars five six seven i don't know it's not a lot and for any compressor i'm just using a five horsepower uh 30 gallon craftsman uh single stage compressor nothing fancy and it keeps up okay pretty much by the time I'm, i've emptied this uh the compressor will need to recover so by the time i get it filled back up the compressor is recovered and then i can go again so yeah, works pretty good. We're gonna try to get the bulk of this rust off so we can get it painted up. So for anyone who's ever used a wire brush or wire cut brushes or tried to remove rust, this is one of those tools that you'll never realize what you did uh, without it until after you bought it and used it. And it, this tool is just literally amazing. It's just so enjoyable to use. It cuts down prep time so much. It just gives a great surface when it comes time to paint. You'll ask yourself, why didn't I buy this tool sooner? doesn't require any really special air compressor. I'm using a really small uh, diameter hose here. The compressor keeps up fine. The one thing you want to make sure you do is get one of these hoods uh, and make sure you have a respirator because you definitely don't want to be breathing in this stuff. It's bad for you. This guy's all painted up and I'm loving the way this came out. So for the base, I just did the black uh, hammered paint and for the column, I did the hammered paint silver which kind of like goes along the same lines of uh, the drill press we just did. I wanted the base to be black to match that one. And you see how it's got that little silver trim around that and all the other stuff silver? That's what I did here. So I made that silver. This piece of the drill press is silver. So I kind of wanted to tie it all in, kind of make it all match. Maybe that sounds weird, but that's just how I am. So how much do you guys think this weighs? What are your guesses? I'm saying, I'm gonna say right now, and I don't know, 150. Uh, remember that that column is filled with sand also. So let's give it a try. 127.6. So initially I thought it was gonna be around 200, and then I kinda of guessed, well, maybe it'd be around 150. It came in close to 130. So I was off by a little bit, but with the grinder on it, it will be at 150. But this is a substantial enough base that we don't have to worry about this thing walking all around and vibrating through the shops. So. All right, let's get it mounted onto the base now. Now the way I'm mounting this is I have a flange bolt, and then I'm just putting on a rubber grommet onto that, and then I'm putting on another grommet underneath with a flat washer underneath that, and then a locking nut so that none of it vibrates loose. And it also has rubber pads under the grinder, so that should help isolate out any vibration that this may have. And here it is, guys. I'm super happy with this. Now, this isn't where it's gonna live. I think it's probably gonna be right there, but I don't fully know yet but um yeah the great part about this though is now it's on a pedestal we can put it anywhere and it is super heavy so it's not gonna move so here we go let's try it oh yeah so there is vibration in the grinder because these wheels have quite a bit of run out in them. They're not the most uh, accurate balanced grinding wheel. So if I had some good uh, wheels for this, this would be a lot better. But the good thing is, is that you can feel vibration here and you cannot feel it here. And you literally cannot feel any here. So yeah, I think that that was a huge help putting sand inside that. Well, there we go, guys. There's another tool down, another one built. See how it kind of matches? Silver post, black base, black base, silver, 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 silver. See? Yeah, I know. I want my tools to match, but my clothes don't.
And that's all there is to it, guys. I think that this is going to be an awesome solution to a problem that I've had for a while, and you guys have made sure to let me know. And my standard response was is that I needed to wait until I could build a pedestal. Well, I'm really happy with how this pedestal came out, and I've got probably less than $40 in this whole project. If this is something that you like, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. New videos every Friday. If you're wondering what I'm working on before it makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'll have links down below. Until next Friday, guys, I will see you then. Take care. Stay safe. See ya.